G'day guys, welcome back. I'm doing that big one that I said I was going to do in the previous video. Same colours, but bigger. Now, I thickened up my peach and I thickened up my gold. When you get the gold out of the bottle and you mix it two to one, uh, two parts pouring medium, one part paint, it's really quite thick. So I used to mix it like um, probably three to one, <clears throat> but it's um, it was too thin. So I've added a little bit more gold and we'll go again. <clears throat> if you find that one colour, your lacing is spreading too much or it's growing too much, that'll probably mean that your that colour is too thin so i've made those two thicker now i'll show you this this is one that i did a little while ago um just learning about swiping and, and tilting on the bigger surfaces the middle went all wonky because i had too much paint in the middle and not enough on the sides so the middle paint couldn't go anywhere so it kind of all went wonky so i just put some balloon smashes medallions in the middle and I actually really like that. I've got some gorgeous lacing on the edges here. Um, so, but yeah, going again, but hopefully the middle will be okay this time and I won't have to try and save it with balloon medallions. <clears throat> now, I put my pillow paint into this uh, litre squeeze bottle. It is two parts of Floetrol to one part Amsterdam Titanium White. Oh, sorry, that's my CA. <laughs> uh, my pillow paint is just British Paints Wall Interior Lotion in white. So that's my pillow paint in there. This is my CA. Um, oh, look, I've made it thicker. That's right, I was going to make it thicker. So it is one part Floetrol to one part Titanium White. I should just shut up. <laughs> I'm just getting you all confused. I'll, I'll go back to bed. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, um, last video I said I'm going to try and make my CA thicker. Just because my white was vanishing. So I've made the white thicker, I've made the gold thicker, I've made the peach thicker. And we'll see how we go. Right, uh, the pouring medium is three parts untinted wall paint, one part polycrylic and one part Josonia's gloss varnish. And then I mix that two to one with my Josonia's paints. Right, is that clear as mud? Now the cell activator I'm going to pour onto the plastic sheet here and I'm going to dip that in into it and then I'm going to swipe. Um, this is something that um, Pouring with Sonia uh, put up a post about and I did a smaller one on it and I liked it so I'll try again with the bigger one. But anyway, let's get started. I'm just going to put a rectangle of pillow paint there in the middle. I'll just take the lid off. And then I can pour it out a little bit easier because it's a big canvas. This is a 30 by 60 centimetre, uh, 12 by 24 inch. When I pour straight out of the can, it kind of goes bloop, 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 and I get big blobs of it coming out. But uh, this sort of just gives me a more even coating. So I just want to do that basically a rectangle there and uh, hopefully that will be enough i am going to be tilting so you don't want to put too much on there because you just tilt it all off just kind of make it rectangular like so and that's about it i've got my um, paper towel ready to go let's get started now I'm going to try and change up my pouring of my colors a little bit just so that I, I get more of a variation of colors rather than a big block of one color I haven't got much left of this oops and you're probably why won't you open oh. scabby bit of paint on the top see that that was stuck on the top wouldn't open you gotta make sure that you wipe your your tops every time after you've done a pour otherwise you get those dried bits on top so you haven't got very much of this I'm 
as you can see, it's nearly all gone. Stand it upside down for a minute. Uh, so that's the aqua. This one is teal. It's 50 50 phthalo blue and phthalo green. So that's what's in that one. This one is the salmon that I made up. It is naphthol red and some magenta, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. Just a, kept mixing really until I got a colour that I want. See, I'm doing little thin stripes just to see if I can get different colour variations coming through rather than a block of colour. Does that make sense? See what happens anyway. Because I tend to get the same, you know, the same colour coming through, a lot of the one colour coming through. do it like this maybe I can get a variety of colors coming through and then you can't really see that dark green so let's just put a little bit more of it across the top and I'll close all these wipe them down Okay, I don't know if this is going to work. Hopefully it, it will. Hopefully it will be good. As in, you know, my little streaky, little strips of colour. Hopefully that will be... So that should be enough paint anyway. <clears throat> so now I've got my cell activator. I've got my little palette knife. I've only got this size or this size. I kind of need to get one in between. So I will try and do that at some stage. Um, now I'll just put that there. Hopefully you can still see that. And I'm going to pour my cell activator onto that, onto my little piece of plastic. And then I'll dip my palette knife into it. <clears throat> now when you're pushing your palette knife, you do need to give quite a bit of pressure. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit more paint, a little bit of pressure so that you're pushing uh, the colours. You need to push the white kind of through the colours so it picks up the colours underneath. Otherwise, you'll just have white. You need to push those colours down over the white. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. <laughs> All right, dip that in. So I've got it on there. Take half, we only need half for now, so we need to have the other half for later. Push that down, look at that. Wipe it off so that it's nice and clean again. Still can't see much of my white in the middle there. Bizarre. It's nice and thick this CA. I was thinking I would see more of the white, but not really. Push that across. I know that I like having no white there because normally I would have more colour there. Put some more of this on. That's all right. I'll obviously just need to stretch it more to get the colour to the edges. Maybe I need to cover the whole thing and then put a little bit more in the centre of the pillow paint. See, now I didn't push that one hard enough. See all that white I've got there? I didn't push my, my palette knife deep enough to get those colours underneath. Let's go again. I'll push a little bit harder this time. Push those colours over. See the difference? Push those colours right to the edge. So that's what happens when you push harder. That's what happens when you don't push hard enough. See the colours have stayed up there. Here the colours have actually gone down to the bottom and you can see the difference. Good example, hey. Did I teach you something? Did I? Ha ha, did I? Yes, I did. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Whoops, that one I didn't. I didn't take enough paint. I'm trying to leave half for here, but I only took about a, a third or something. Oh my gosh. 
Right, let's take more paint. I've got plenty of it. Don't need to skimp on paint. Take half. I don't know what I was thinking, trying to take like a third or a quarter of it. I need to take that amount of paint over to get colour down there. I'll have to go back over these two. All right, here we go. Half the paint. Push it over. Just a little bit there, but that's okay. It should be fine. I haven't got my palette knife actually straight. It's, it's not like straight. It's on a bit of an angle like that, and I'm pushing the white over the top and pushing the other colours with it. So that they'll spread over that pillow. So they don't spread over the pillow, you're not going to have any colour down towards your edges. Oh yeah. No. Now with this, if it starts to spread, you can just do that with your plastic and try and get the paint to go back into the middle. That's why this little plastic's so good, because it can do that. And you don't have to worry about your CA sinking, you know, by doing too much of a swipe area at once. You can just do little areas at a time, wherever you want to do them. I am going to have to go over this again, though. This area here. It's too much white for my liking. I might leave that one. Let's see what it looks like. Now that little gap there that I've missed, that's okay, I'm going to tilt over that anyway. I'll, I'll leave that, it can have a little bit more white, because see there's a little bit more white there, so that kind of matches. I need to do this very last little edge here. Move my bottle of paint out of the way. You have to make sure that you get your edges, just in case you can't get to all your corners. Alright, let's turn it around. Looking pretty so far, hey. Let's fold that over. And I'll put some more CA here. Cell activator, CA, for those that don't know what it is. Oh, got gorgeous little ring pour just down there. Now. I don't normally like swiping towards myself, but I found that with the palette knife, I can just push it on an angle like that away from me and it works really well. So I don't hold it flat like that, I hold it on a bit of an angle like that while I'm pushing. Otherwise, um, I wouldn't be digging into the paint enough to push it. But anyway, you guys have a go. You'll see what I mean once you start doing this. You go, oh, that's what she means. Having on angle, pushing that paint through. That's what she means. And take it around. Don't drip into your painting. I don't know whether the white, the thicker white CA is making much of a difference. A bit hard to tell just yet. I thought I might have some more white lacing because it's a bit thicker but it doesn't seem to to be I guess it may hold the lacing <clears throat> better keep it better in shape once I start tilting but at the moment the uh, white is just being eaten up by the colors underneath it and overlap each one as you go overlap the one next to it. You will get those lines between there. There's not much you can do about that unless you're just going to do one big swipe all at once. Um, <clears throat> I guess you could possibly offset them a little bit so that they're not exactly the same as the one above it. That could be like where that line is, you know, do that so it's covering those just so that you can sort of offset them a little bit. That's probably a better idea, actually. Didn't think about it at the time. I'll try and offset a little bit now. I've got some green into that. I'll just get that 
off. Put a little bit more on. It might look as if I'm using a lot of this, but if I was actually pouring that on, most of it would sink and I'd lose it anyway. Nearly there, you guys, nearly there. I have to get myself a slightly bigger tool. I can do bigger areas at once. Oh, I didn't put my painting scrubs on today. I just got my old clothes on and I'm getting covered in paint. <laughs> Must have paint stuck to the table and then I'm leaning on the table. And getting paint on my clothes. Just got a bit of blue there that's got nothing on it. I'm going to go over it again. Over the corner. The only the thing I don't like doing is when you swipe again, see how the tool has pulled the lacing down so it, it kind of goes a bit oblong. Um, so there's going to be areas like that where the two have pushed up against each other and you can see little little lines like that. Um, you can, if you want, go over them again, but then where your tool goes through the centre, it's going to pull the lacing in like it did there and you get that kind of look. So you're probably better off just leaving it. And the more times you swipe, um, the more kind of blending it's going to get and it's not going to look as pretty so um, I feel that you're better off just swiping once and being done with it. Try and save a little bit of this because it hasn't been used. Oh nearly got it in there. Let's throw that in my bin or trash can. Okay now the fun part, right, it looks as if I've got a really nice array of colours. I haven't just got one block. You know how sometimes you have a line of pink, a line of turquoise, but it's kind of all blended. Each side's different. Each section's different. So that seems to be good so far because I did the little thin strips. Now, <laughs> I'm putting this off because I don't really know what to do. I know I have to go over my corner, so... Right, first of all, I've got to loosen up everything. Make sure that it's all moving together. See, my middle's a little bit stuck, so what I need to do is I'm just going to do this, same as I do when I do my, my round blooms. Make sure that everything is moving in unison. It's all moving together. If there's areas in the middle that are still not moving, just keep keep going like this until the paint sort of floats on top of the pillow. Hopefully it will loosen up. If it doesn't, I might be in a bit of trouble. There's a bit just, just there that's not wanting to move. I'm going to keep going with it. Persist. See if I can get that little middle bit to loosen up. Still doesn't want to. That's all right. I'm just, you know, whittling the paint. Don't just wiggle up and down. Go side to side. That way your lacing hopefully gets into a nice shape. It's starting to move now. Okay. I'm going to go off to the one the one corner first. Oops, I don't like how it all goes off to the side. Now the weight of the paint's all down here, so let's just go off to this other side while we're here. Never done this before, I've always gone at the sort of the opposite corner. But let's go alongside and then come back, straighten it up a little bit. Oh, that worked. That worked. Kind of. <laughs> right, let me turn it around. I don't like tilting towards me. I'd rather tilt away from me. Okay, now I need to 
to bring everything back to the middle. Stretch that lacing out. I'll hang on to my push pins down here. Now, let's go off to this corner. Oh my gosh, please work. Over. And back, because the weight of the paint's already sort of at the bottom of the canvas there. So hopefully if I go straight back down, I don't want to lose too much off the bottom, but off the long edge of the bottom, but I do need to get down there. Let's take some of that light colour off just a little bit and then straighten it again. And actually, no, I might leave that little bit of light there. Why not? I don't want to take too much off and then you know, I'm going to lose my, my, what's the word? Shape? Um, what's the word? I can't think of it. All I can think of is consistency, but it's not that. My, my, I can't think of it. Doesn't matter. All right. Now, people always say to me, don't have a straight line in the middle, you know, make it a little bit off center or a little bit curvy or something like that. This kind of bothers me a little bit, that paleness, but I'm not going to, wow, look at that. I'm not going to do any more to it. Um, right, what do I do now? Hmm. Do I just leave it? See, I could stretch my lacing out a little bit more. But then, this is what I did last time. I tried to stretch everything out and um, it started going all crooked and then I hated it and then I scraped it. <laughs> so let's just leave it like that and call that done. Wow. That lacing is just so delicate. Oh my, it's really, really pretty. And I haven't got that big line through the center like of a lot of white or a lot of gold. Because the last one I did, <clears throat> did you see the last one where I had the thinner peach? It had those huge, big, I'll go and get it. it. Had those huge, big lacings in the middle. It's kind of a bit of a wave there. Look at that, look at that dark teal against the peach. Oh my gosh. And it's um, it's worked out really nicely. I've made the peach thicker. There's a little bit of color there that hasn't got anything in it, but hey, I think it's pretty good. It's all right. Let me just grab that other one, what I'm talking about. And then you can tell me what you think, which one you prefer. This one, my mix was a lot thinner. See, my lacing's a lot bigger, and I've got that big block of peach in the middle there. So this one's more organised. Um, yeah. I guess I could stretch it out more, but I'm really not game. I don't want, I don't want it to go all, like, wobbly on that one. I've got that big section that was all bent like that. So, no, I think I'll, I'll just leave it like that, happy with it. You know the 70% rule? If you're 70% happy with it, leave it. Otherwise, you'll start tilting and stretching, and then you'll go, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Now I'm only 30% happy with it and 70% unhappy with it. <laughs> right, let me get the camera down. And um, I can show you both of these together, actually. You can see which one you like. Yeah, I wonder I wonder if my lacing stayed small like that because my cell activator was was thicker I'm just gonna turn off the lights hang on that could be the reason why the lacing has stayed so small because the cell activator was thicker so because it's thicker it hasn't allowed the paint underneath to to stretch it as much 
That could be a reason, couldn't it? But look at those colour variations we're getting. And there is lacing from top to toe. From woe to go. You can see all the different colour shades because of the way that I layered my paint. Got lots of variations of colour. It's going on and on and on, isn't it? Going on forever. <clears throat> Come around this way. Love how the lacing goes right to the edge. And you saw what happened when I didn't push down hard enough. I got those big blocks of white um, down the bottom there. You could actually see the white pillow paint. And then when I went and uh, swiped again and pushed a little bit harder, I got the colour right to the bottom there. So, you know, hopefully that will, that taught you something. I mean, if you like the, the white on the bottom, feel free not to push so hard. You just skim a little bit of colour over, but I personally like to have the painting full of paint. So that's that one. And then that was the one that I just did before. Still pretty too, um, but it's just that big block of peach there on, on the left that bothers me. And those curved, those curved lines at the top there. I don't know where to stand. I'm not used, not used to working on this table. I usually work on my other table, but I've got something big going on there. So, yeah, which one do you like? I mean, I guess it's a little bit busy because it's got all those dividing lines between it. But if I had a bigger swipe tool, I could just swipe once maybe. And I wouldn't have all those lines. Maybe I can try with my, my big guy next time. What do you think? And just swipe once or twice. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. Hope you have enjoyed that. Hope you've learnt something from these two pores about consistency and about the pressure used for swiping. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I'm running out of ideas. I'll see you real soon for the next one anyway. Okay, don't forget to hit that little notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. All right, I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.